Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn how to install and use Solborn scripts for architectural visualization projects. We're going to start by going to Nail Plevin's website. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Click the Art Assets link, then the Solborn button. Scroll down to Find Installer and download the latest version. In this page, we can also find the description of each one of the scripts. To install the script, you need to go to the main 3ds Match folder in Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Match, and copy all the zip content to the main 3ds Match folder. If you get an override warning, select Yes. After installing Solborn Script, the first thing we need to do is to add the script's icon to a toolbar. If you don't know how to create a toolbar, you can see my toolbars video in this link. It is also really important to select the script with UI at the end to have access to the user interface. Solborn is a collection of 85 different scripts, but for this video, we're going to focus on 10 that can help us to speed up our ArchBase projects. The first one is Solborn Script Lister. It will allow us to access all scripts from a drop-down menu. You just need to select the script and click Apply. It's important to use the Run as UI option to access the user interface. Pivot Placer is one of my favorites. It can help us to quickly place the object Pivot using 27 different points. We just need to select the object and double-click one of the points. We can select Top, Bottom, Center, Sides, or even Corners. We can keep all the settings as default. If at any point you find that the points are inverted or is not working properly, you can reset the object edge form. This can help to solve most issues with this script. With Object Attacher, we can quickly attach all the selected objects. Just select the objects you want to attach and click the Apply button. There are only a few options to control. With Mode, we can select if we want the attachment to be Poly, Mesh, Spline, or Auto Detect. I recommend using Auto Detect. It works really well most of the time. We can also check Show Warning if we want a warning to confirm the action. And lastly, Keep Original Objects. This option is going to create a copy of the original object and then attach them. We need to keep in mind that if we are attaching hundreds or thousands of objects, the process can take several minutes or even crash mats. One last advice with this script is to always save before attaching and if 3ds Max is unresponsive, give it a few extra minutes before killing the process. Object Detacher can quickly detach all elements of the selected object. You can keep all settings as default. There are a couple of settings we can check or uncheck depending on the results we want. The first one, keep wireframe color. If it's selected, we're going to keep the current wireframe color instead of creating a new color per element. The select result is going to select all the detached elements after we detach them and delete original objects, it's going to remove from the scene the original objects. This is an important option, as sometimes we want to keep a copy of the original objects. In that case, you can uncheck this option. Once you finish with the settings, select the object you want to detach and click Apply. It's also important to mention that this is going to detach each element of the selected object. In this example, you can see that each of the elements of the pot has been detached, and not the whole pot. This is something to take in consideration, as a large number of elements can take a long time to detach. Layer Cleaner can help us to clean all empty layers. Just click the Apply button and all the empty layers will be removed. This script is especially useful if we are importing AutoCAD files into 3ds Max and we want to remove all the additional layers. Name Manager is another handy script to keep a correct organization and object naming of our projects. It can help us to rename objects in the scene using different functions. I like to use rename plus a pen number, keeping a pre-name for elements like accessories, structural, or furniture, and then using the base name. The append section is going to control the numbers at the end of the name. In this example, it starts at number one, moving one number at a time with a pad of two, which means that the first object is 01, then 02, then 03, the item section can help us to indicate what we want to rename. I like to manually select the objects, but you can also use all seen objects if all the objects will have a similar name. Once you finish, click apply. We can see that the first pod has a different name than the second pod. If we change the pad number to one and click apply, we're going to remove the zero from the numbering at the end of the name. 
Rename works the same way, but without numbers, so all the selected objects will have the same name. There are many different functions to select that can match our naming conventions. Circle Array can help us to distribute objects around the circle. There are only a couple of important settings to control. Number of copies, to select how many objects are we creating, and object type. In this case, I recommend using instance. In this example, we're going to use effect pivot only in quick align to change the chair pivot to the center of the table. First, go to hierarchy pivot, then select the effect pivot only button. You're going to see that the pivot icon is going to change and we're going to be able to move the pivot only without the chair. After this, go to tool, align, quick align, or what I recommend, pressing shift plus A to access the quick align option and then click the table. You can see that only the pivot point has been moved to the center of the table. Turn off Affect Pivot Only and using the Circle Array Maker script, change the number of copies and click Apply. This process works well for single objects, multiple objects, or even groups. And remember, if it's not working properly, use the Edge form. This solve most issues with pivot placing. Object Dropper can help us to quickly place objects on top of a surface using the object pivot point. The first thing we're going to do is move the pivot to the bottom of the object. For this, we can use the pivot placer script. We have two buttons to select the surface object. The first, and the one that I recommend using, is Pick Ground Object. It will allow us to pick the object from the viewport without deselecting our current object. But this only works if we are selecting just one surface. For more than one surface, we need to select the Add Selection to Ground Objects button. It's not possible to add new surfaces to the list. If we try to do it, the script is going to override the previous surface for the new one. We're going to keep all the settings as default and press the Apply button. We can see that the pod has been moved to the top of the surface using the pivot point as a reference. We have a few additional options. The first one is Treat Group as one object. When this is checked, the selected group is going to be moved using the group pivot point. In this example, the pivot is in the middle of the group and the pods have different heights. After we press the apply button, we can see that one of the pods is under the surface due to the location of the group pivot point. If we uncheck this option, we're going to use the pivot of the objects inside of the group, even if the group is closed. And as both pods have the pivot point at the bottom, once we press the apply button, the pods are going to be moved to the top of the surface. This is really useful for groups with multiple objects like accessories or vegetation. We just need to make sure that the pivots are placed correctly. Group Direction can help us to select the direction in which the objects will move. We can select from Edge, Y, and Z, positive or negative axis. This will allow us to move the objects to walls or ceilings and not only to the floor. We can use these for ceiling lamps, frames, or even vertical vegetation. And the last one is Align to Ground. I recommend having this option always check. What it's going to do is to move the selected object and then align it to the surface using the pivot point orientation. This is really useful for an even or angled surface. One last recommendation, if the tool is not working properly, remember to use Reset Edge Form. This can help most problems with pivot placing and orientation of objects. Object Replacer is one of my favorite tools. With this script, we can select an object and then replace it for any other object in the same scene. In this example, we're going to replace the pot for the pepper grinder. We have three replacer types, single object, selection set, and multiple objects. The one I recommend is single object. This can give us the most predictable results and it's really easy to use. We're going to use the pick the object to replace with button to select the pepper grinder. If you're going to replace a group with multiple objects inside, it's really important to open the group and select the group helper instead of selecting the close group. It is also really important the position of the pivot point. We can use the pivot placer to change it to the bottom of the object. Then we're going to select the pod and keep all attributes checked and press the apply button. In this example, the object was replaced correctly, but the scale in the name is wrong. To fix this, we're going to go to the selection attributes to keep. In this section, we can select which attributes from the original object we're keeping. As we know that the scale and name are not correct, we can uncheck these two options and then press the apply button. After this, the new pepper grinder is going to have the correct scale and name. The attributes we're keeping depend on the objects we're replacing and the project. So this is going to change most of the time. The next option is delete original. If this is unchecked, the original object 
is going to remain in the scene. Also, remember to always work with instances. We never know when we need to change the object shape or material, and this can help us to modify all objects at the same time. Selection Randomizer can help us to randomly select objects in our current selection. We have three different selection types, weight, exact number, and percentage. I recommend using percentage. We're going to start by selecting all the objects. In this example, we have 40 selected objects and we only want to randomly select half of the objects. So we're going to change the percentage to 50 and then click the apply button. We can see that our selection has been changed to 20 objects. With these 20 objects selected, we're going to change the percentage to 25. This is going to give us a result of only five selected objects or one quarter of the original selection. If we want a specific number, we can use the exact number option. In this case, we're going to change it to 10 and press the apply button. We can see that the selected object has been changed to 10. It is important to notice that each time we do these, the new selected objects are going to be different from the previous ones we selected, even if it's the same number of objects. Transform Randomizer can help us to randomly translate, rotate, or scale our selected objects. We have three different sections, translate, rotate, and scale. In each of the sections, we can specify the lowest and highest random value in which of objects are going to be affected, as well as the random axis using one of five different buttons. For this example, we're going to change the translation low value to minus 50 and the high value to zero. With this, we're going to be moving our objects only in the negative axis. If we press the first button, R X, we can see that the three plants are moved randomly in the negative X axis. If we press the R Y, the plants will move in the negative Y axis. And if we press the R set button, the plants are going to be moved randomly in the set axis. R X, R Y, R set button is going to randomly move on each of the axes at the same time. If we press the R X, Y, set button, we're going to have the same random value for all three axes. The buttons and settings in the rotate and scale section work exactly the same as what we have seen for the translate section. What I recommend for the rotate is having a low value of minus 360 or minus 180 and a high value of 360. This is going to give us a random rotation of any number between minus 360 and 360 degrees. For the rotation section, we're also going to be using the RC button most of the time. It is also important to use the pivot point center for rotation so all the objects will use their own pivot point. For the scale section, the low and high values are going to change depending on the objects and the project. But for vegetation, I recommend having a difference of 30 to 60 between low and high. For this section, we're also going to use most of the time the R, X, Y, Z button as we want to have a uniform scale for each of the objects. It is also important to change the pivot selection to use pivot center, but I recommend changing it to this option and have it enabled anytime that you're using Transform Randomizer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.